Once upon a time, there was a dark and mysterious order in the Islamic world. Known as the Assassins, this group was not just a religious entity, but also a political powerhouse. Representing the Ismaili branch, the Assassins, led by their leader Hassan Sabah, shook the Islamic world with cunning schemes and sharp assassinations. The tale of Hassan Sabah begins in the dusty streets of Qum. It was here, in the middle of the 11th century, that he was born in the warm lands of Iran. Hassan Sabah was raised in a legacy of intellectuality. He spent his childhood immersed in philosophy, logic and mathematics. But his greatest passion lay in the beliefs of the Ismaili sect and the concept of Imamate. Under the shadow of the great Seljuk Empire, the Islamic world was under the dominance of Sunni Islam. Hassan Sabah, however, was part of a minority that challenged this dominance. Yet his ambitions and aspirations did not allow him to remain just a member of this minority. He was determined to fundamentally change the Islamic world. Thus, Hassan Sabah and his loyal followers sought refuge in Alamut Castle. This fortress became their headquarters, and from here they aimed to rule over the entire Islamic world. Alamut was a symbol of their power and grandeur. However, this power was built not only on the crumbling walls of castles, but also on the daggers of the fearless assassins, whom the assassins called the Fedayeen. The assassins' assassinations created an earthquake in the Islamic world. Their enemies trembled in fear and statesmen closed their eyes in terror. However, this fear was fueled by the intelligence and courage of the assassins' powerful leader, Hassan Sabah. When Hassan Sabah breathed his last on his deathbed in Alamut Castle, the legend of the assassins did not die with him. Those who followed in his footsteps continued to shake the Islamic world. However, despite all its splendor, the end of the assassins was inevitable. Alamut Castle was captured by the Mongol army and the influence of the assassins gradually faded away. Yet, even years after Hassan Sabah's death, the legend of the assassins still echoes from tongue to tongue. Their courage and determination have become an unforgettable part of history. And perhaps in secret, the spirit of the assassin still roams in the dark corners of the Islamic world. Once upon a time, in the intricate tapestry of the Islamic world, there existed a clandestine order known as the Hashashans. They were more than a mere sect. They were a brotherhood bound by a singular purpose, to expand the domain of Shia Islam and assert dominance over the Muslim realm. At the helm of this enigmatic order stood a figure shrouded in both mystery and intellect, Hassan Sabah. Born into the Ismaili branch of Shia Islam, Sabah's journey began in the ancient city of Qom, where he was raised amidst the whispers of his ancestors' illustrious lineage. Despite his scholarly pursuits in philosophy, mathematics and astronomy, Sabah's true calling lay in the realm of faith and ideology. As the winds of Sunni Islam swept across the land, Sabah found himself at odds with the prevailing orthodoxy, his beliefs marking him as a renegade in the eyes of the ruling elite. Undeterred by persecution and ostracization, Sabah embarked on a mission to spread his doctrine and swell the ranks of his followers. From the bustling markets of Persia to the remote villages of Anatolia, his message resonated with those disillusioned by the dogma of Sunni Islam. As his influence grew, Sabah sought refuge in the impregnable fortress of Alamut. Nestled amidst the towering peaks of the Alborz Mountains, Alamut became not only a sanctuary for Sabah and his disciples, but also a symbol of defiance against the forces of oppression. Within the walls of Alamut, Sabah trained a select cadre of warriors known as the Fedayen. These elite assassins were handpicked for their unwavering loyalty and mastery of both blader and intellect. Under Sabah's tutelage, they honed their skills in the arts of deception, infiltration and, when necessary, elimination. The Hashashin's reputation for swift and precise strikes soon spread far and wide. From the courts of Baghdad to the palaces of Damascus, none were safe from their reach. Their most daring escapades often targeted key figures in the Sunni hierarchy, striking fear into the hearts of their adversaries. In the secluded haven of Alamut, 
Hassan Sabah orchestrated a meticulous program of indoctrination to ensure unwavering loyalty from his disciples. According to the accounts of the Venetian explorer Marco Polo, Alamut Castle itself was crafted to facilitate this indoctrination. Describing the castle in his writings, Polo marvels at the splendor of the surroundings. Hassan Sabah had constructed the most magnificent garden ever seen, nestled between two mountains in a valley. It bore the finest fruits and at its heart a fountain flowed with wine, milk, honey and water of various kinds. Continuing his narration from the Book of Marvels, Polo recounts, he had brought the most beautiful virgins in the world, skilled in playing all instruments and singing like angels, into the garden and convinced the old man's followers that it was paradise. The term old man refers to Sabah, who was believed to have died in his 90s. Polo's account also reveals that only the disciples willing to commit to assassination were permitted entry into this garden of earthly delights. For 866 years, the Nizaris thrived under Sabah's leadership. However, their reign came to a catastrophic end when the Mongols, their northern adversaries, laid waste to them. According to Gutierrez de Terran, the Mongols exploited their geographical advantage and displayed far greater ruthlessness compared to the Crusaders, ultimately prevailing over the Nizaris. Alamut Castle, now steeped in legend, fell into the hands of Hulagu Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, who razed it to the ground. Some sources suggest that Hulagu Khan believed his uncle had been assassinated by the Alamut assassins. Throughout their existence, the assassins targeted numerous Muslim and Christian leaders as long as they were under a certain rule. Yet one of their most famous assassination attempts targeted Saladin Ayyubi, who recaptured Jerusalem in the 12th century. Saladin managed to evade this attack, cementing his legacy as a resilient leader. Amidst the turmoil of the time, 